Hello, I'm Dr. Israel Barkin. I'm the medical director of the Prostate Cancer Research and Education Foundation. Recently, I came back from a conference. The name of the conference was Cancer, Immunology, and Immunotherapy. This took place at the NIH. And I was very excited to hear about new development about immunology for cancer in general, but especially there were some mentioning of studies done for prostate cancer and a little glimpse at future studies specifically for prostate cancer. So let's look a second at this schema. This was written by Charles Drake from John Hopkins, and this was published in August 2010. And here he described the different stages of the disease, and that comes to serve the purpose for me to explain why am I so excited about immune therapy. And the reason is, in the past, immune therapy was given to patients with advanced disease when there was a tremendous bulk of disease that the immune therapy had to overcome in fighting the cancer. And the tendency now is to move perhaps earlier, as you'll see that I'll mention it when Dr. Schlom talked about it in the, this NIH meeting. So you see here the different stages of disease. And if you see here, there is only one treatment, the Provence, that was given to castration-resistant disease metastatic. So you'll see how this is moving now increasingly forward. Here I'm saying forward because I think that treating patients with localized disease and minimal disease is a step in the right direction, and that's moving forward. There are other treatments given here. You see that clinical localized disease, primary treatment, and androgen therapy for biochemical recurrence. And we'll see how there is a new immunological treatment relating to these stages, the castration-resistant, non-metastatic, metastatic disease, hormone-sensitive, biochemical recurrence. And this is the PROSTVAC that I would like to explain to you, which is a different type of immunological treatment compared to the Provence. In a recent article by one of the experts, Dr. Simons, about bioengineering immunology, he, he talks a lot about tackling the issue of bone metastatic disease. Fortunately, we don't see that many patients as we used to in the past, but we see more patients at the initial phases that are over-treated, and perhaps immune therapy will not be over-treating. But this slide shows beautifully the different type of targets for immune therapy. Here you see the PAP, this is the Provence. Here is the PSA, the CrossVac. There was some discussion about CTLA-4 and PD-1, and I will not get into this mode of treatment now. But just to give you an impression how many treatments are being now checked and examined for prostate cancer which are immunology, and not only that, combination of other treatments, and I will talk about the enzalutamide that replaces the LHRH agonist, at least when it comes to the new trend to avoid giving shots like Lupron and try to give second generation of anti-androgen that still leave the androgen, the testosterone in the body. So let's continue and look now. This is a cartoon of different type of immunological approaches. On the A here you see is the Provence. Here is much more complicated because we have to extract cells from the blood. We have to prepare them. We have to incubate them with certain antigen and then we have to inject it to the patient. On C here you see another approach, the CTLA-4 and PD-1, where we block the inhibition the T cells, some of them, we call them T regulatory cells, and they try to disregard the cancer and not tackle it. Once we remove that inhibition, there is enhancement of the immune system. But this will be discussed at another time. I want to focus on the prostate. So here it is. What it is, we take an antigen like PSA together with three other antigens that are really stimulating the immune system and we put them in a vaccinia and fowl pox virus, and we inject it into the patient. 
you see here again, here is the composition of the antigen and the co-stimulatory uh, molecules. We put them in the virus and we inject it into the patient and we it creates induction of tumor specific immune response by training the T cell via the dendritic cell we know to try to go after the cancer. And this has some long-term effect. That's why it's important to give it early so the patient develop this immunity that could be utilized for the long term. This is Dr. James Galley, who I had the, the privilege to interview him like three years ago. And you could read my interview on my video blog at drbarkenwordpress.com. And he is the laboratory of tumor immunology and biology. And he devoted a lot of time to studying the prost bug. This is phase two study that was completed already and really showed advantage for giving the PROSVAC. This was PROSVAC, which is the PSA trichome, another name for it, together with GMCSF or without the GMCSF, and they show difference in the survival. That prompted a phase three study where they have three arms. They have the PSA trichome with GMSF, which stands for granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. And another arm was the vaccine with the placebo, and the other arm was the placebo. So this was open in September 2011, and it's going probably to finish the study. The study is going to be finished at the beginning of 2015. And here is what I'm getting so excited to try to talk to you about the PROSVAC, because what I learned in this meeting is from the lecture that Jeffrey Sean gave, and he there described the new studies giving PROSVAC and enzalutamide also for patients in an earlier phase of the disease. For example, in patients that had PSA rising after primary treatment. And he also disclosed that in the beginning of next year, 2015, they will take 90 patients and they will give them a PROSVAC only for people with primary disease, but with being categorized as low, low risk prostate cancer disease. So one group will get the vaccine, one group will get the, the placebo for the vaccine, but these people are also candidates for observation. And after one year, this 90 patient will have biopsy to compare to original biopsy, and there will be other measurement that will be studied. I'm telling to the viewers that have primary prostate cancer are on active surveillance that perhaps there will be another immunological study and follow with the NIH. Let's go now and view a video because Dr. Gali who is the PROSVAC researcher, will be able to tell us in uh, more detail what is the PROSVAC and information regarding to the PROSVAC. Let's go now to Dr. James Galley. PROSVAC is a pox viral based vaccine that has a vaccinia priming and a Falpox boost. Each of these pox viruses has the genes for PSA, and that PSA has actually been modified to make it more immunogenic, as well as the genes for three different human T cell co-stimulatory molecules, which really drive the immune response to a higher plane. What happens as an immune response against one target, say PSA for instance, can lead to immune killing, and then subsequent, the immune cells take up the dead and dying cancer cells, and they can present any different target within the tumor cell back to the immune system. This results in an iterative process, a loop in which you generate a broader immune response over time. And this broader immune response can become more clinically relevant and more relevant for that given patient's tumor over time. This has been associated with improved overall survival in a randomized phase two study and this is now being tested in a phase three clinical trial. So the treatment with PROSVAC as described in the phase three study comprises a initial 
priming vaccination with vaccinia, and then subsequent booster vaccinations, typically once a month with Falpox vaccine for up to five months, so long as the patient doesn't have clinical progression. Typically, we don't see an immediate decrease in the PSA in patients treated. This PSA decrease, if it happens, may be later, or the alteration in the rate of rise of the PSA may be later. But that gets to the underlying mechanism of action where it takes a while to generate a clinically significant immune response. And finally, let's look about PROSPAC studies that are available here from clinicaltrial.gov. We have recruiting study for double-blind phase three efficacy, the PROSVAC and GMCSF, and that will be finished soon. So I highly recommend for patients that think they may qualify to try to call the NIH. There is another study, phase two, active, but not recruiting, has results already. And it's interesting, here they talk about giving a PROSVAC with GMCSF with PSA progression after local therapy with prostate cancer. Another study was completed, phase one feasibility, and that's interesting because they give injection of PROSVAC into prostate that were treated with cryotherapy or with radiation, and it's phase one, and hopefully if there are any good results, we will move to phase two, and it will be another option to treat failure of primary treatment when the prostate was left in place, like cryo or radiation, eventually also for HIFU or other modes of treatment like laser. And the last study is interesting, and the in combination with PSA trichome in patients with non-metastatic castration sensitive. That means patients that have non-metastatic disease, nothing is seen in the CAT scan or MRI or bone scan, and they are sensitive to hormonal blockade. This is also very early disease. So we see this is in patients that had treatment and they will combine giving enzalutamide in combination with the vaccine. If you have any question about PROSVAC studies, please call our foundation at 619-906-4700 or send me an email at info at pcref.org. Thank you. And I think we could be all very hopeful that immunology is moving forward to treat patients with localized disease. Take care. Goodbye.